The owls are not what they seem. <laughs> the owls are never what they seem. And we are recording in five, four, three, three two, two, one. You're not supposed to say the two and the one. To I know, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just riffing, man. You're, you're a professional. You're... All right, sorry. Go again. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you have to go the other way? Is it silence, 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 four, five? Yeah, but you've got to be on the ear of the three. So it doesn't it's really going to be an ear three. Otherwise, it's not scary. <laughs> Are we recording now? <laughs> we, well, we're recording, but we're not, uh, we, we haven't actually introduced ourselves. So we don't know if this is the start of the podcast or not. Okay, but I can tell you right now that the that you're Stephen. And I'm Andy. No! Yes! What's up? <laughs> quack. Yeah. I had a quack for that one. Yeah. Uh, did you did you catch the quack at the end of the podcast? By I certainly did. Did you did you find yeah. that hilarious? Did you fall off your chair laughing because it's I I was gold. driving and I crashed. <laughs> yeah. It wrote my car off. <laughs> quack. <laughs> you talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? No funny how. I mean funny. Like, don't clown you. I'm Peter Bing. We all go a little mad sometimes. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So here's the thing, before we get started... Yeah. Obviously, we've been away for a few weeks because of because of things. Yeah. But a po- what what happened with that p- podcast that came out? What, what was that? Was that some AI triggery you've done? I haven't done anything, honestly. Um, I honestly haven't faked a conversation with you uh, talking about Darkstar because that podcast just appeared out of nowhere. I mean, it's not even our poster graphic. No, it was like an old weird retro thing. So, yeah. That's why I figured you'd done done a quirky AI thing. Yeah, we've replaced you. We've replaced you with AI. That's the thing, Andy. Well, it clearly made more sense than it normally do, so maybe it was... (laughs) Did you actually make more sense? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, thanks. Hang on, you'll have to figure that out. Hang on. But yeah, oh, <laughs> very weird um, that it just appeared out of nowhere. And... When I listened to that podcast, yeah, that's why I thought you kind of wrote the script because it was kind of us riffing, but it yeah. wasn't us because we've not done it. So I makes no sense. It's very it weird. Makes no sense. But we destroyed the computer. So I mean, it sounded like a time travel episode. Did you get that? I got the time travel thing, thing yeah. about it, yeah. Went a bit but, bit far, but, but it didn't seem to go too far. But if it was us that are time travelled, because you know what we're like for time travelling, wouldn't we now remember that we time travelled? Unless we got stuck in the past and this is an alternate. Could be. Oh, I'm up to my neck in multiverses, Stephen. We're not stuck in another one now, are we? But it's possible. But the thing is, if <laughs> if we'd already gone back in time, Say that was us who went back in time. Then whatever happened may have been reversed, and we just don't remember because it never happened past that event, past that one podcast. Do you uh, know what I'm saying, Andy? Yes. So there could actually be an episode out there of Silent Running and Outland that was recorded, but we probably went back in time and murdered those the, the, the you know, those two people who did our podcast back in 1973. Or seventy one, yeah. And therefore, if we'd if we'd actually killed ourselves back in nineteen seventy one, then we would not know that we existed back then, would we? No, we wouldn't. We'd have no memory of it, would we? Exactly. And and that... and, and and you confirming that and being so positive and being so behind this whole idea that we wouldn't remember it makes all that bullshit that I just said make sense. Because we want it to make sense. Yes, it makes complete sense. And that's definitely what happened. Yeah, so we don't remember it. So the, No. That must have been an exciting episode, though. 
It must have been, yeah. It must have been exciting to do, considering if we'd gone back in time to do it. Yeah. I wonder what it would have been like for 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 me and you back in 71 or 73, one of those two years, to see another version of me and you turn up to kill us. That, <laughs> that would have been weird. That would have been quite traumatic, I would quite imagine. Quite traumatic, especially. I mean, I mean how, would they, how would we do it? I mean, how would Especially we... for the me and you that killed them, because how are they ever going to get over that? And then also, we don't remember killing ourselves. We don't remember doing the podcast, and <laughs> well, we don't remember killing ourselves. Yeah, but then in, in that case, it wouldn't be ourselves at all. <laughs> it would just be a, a different dimension. It would be yeah. So, so another version of me and you killed another version of me and you. Yeah. So there's a version out there where we'd, we don't exist. Wow. Or something. But then a version of us that are out there that are murderers. <laughs> <laughs> but that might be us, Andy. Oh, we don't, I don't remember. <laughs> well, so we're in James Cameron. How does this work? <laughs> so let's talk about Terminator Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go. Let's go. The whole Terminator timeline. Let's let's discuss. No. Um, so, Andy, this is frame by frame. It, it, this is frame by frame. We need to put out of our minds what happened because it's obviously never going to come back. It's never going to come back to us again. No, no, no that, that's 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 that's, so a, that's a, We could draw a line under that now. Speculation over. I mean, whatever happened to those people in 1971? They did one episode apparently, and that's it. Yeah, just that w- one yes. weird episode that must have yeah. been recorded on like a cassette or something. I mean, it sounded, sounded really well recorded, but it sounded just like this. This, this just sounded like this. So, like, what we're doing right now, didn't it? But but that's it. Yeah, we don't know. So we we can't. We, we just can't touch it. We just don't know. Hey, some mysteries are best left unsolved. Thank you, David Lynch. Thank you. Thank you, David Lynch. Not a donut. Don't look at the hole. No. You look at the donut, not the hole, or you look at the hole, not the donut? Focus on the donut, not not the hole. hole. There you go. And do you know what? Hadley, my six-year-old son, says that because I quoted it to him. And every so often, just out of nowhere, he will just say, focus on the donut, not the hole. Is that because you held him at gunpoint until he got it right? (laughs) Yeah, it was like, you know, Clockwork Isn't Orange. That all he says now. That's that's all he says. <laughs> yeah, basically, I tied him to a chair, made him watch these these videos of atrocities, made his eyes go wide, and then just kept on whispering. The donut, uh, not the hole. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's completely traumatized. But it's worth it for the, the Lynch it's quote. It's worth it. It's worth it for yeah. the Lynch quote. Yeah. It's all so, worth it. So, Andy, this is frame by frame. <laughs> Frame by frame, it's a podcast. We talk about stuff. We talk about stuff, and uh, it's always exciting, and it's always um, I, we're always happy to to have new listeners. Um, uh, that's They've now left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye. Well, um, crazy time travel talk that we don't remember. If we don't re- if we don't remember it, Andy, so then we can only speculate that those two people don't exist anymore. I mean, uh, clearly. It's got to be they'd be pretty old now, anyway, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, we, we we would know about it now. If, if, if... And I would never chase after John Carpenter masturbating. I would never do that. That's not me. I know that's that's a that's the weird thing. That was <laughs> that's the, out of all of everything that happened. That's the weird thing. <laughs> the... I would never do that. I don't but, even yeah. joke about it. No, it's not even funny. It's just no, it's just not disturbing. It's not weird. big and it's not funny. <laughs> hey, what did you hear? <laughs> So this is frame by frame. Frame by frame. Frame by frame. And uh, we're happy to have you here. Um, please listen to us on Spotify, YouTube, um, Audible, wherever you can find your podcast, iTunes, and of course on YouTube, which is where um, most of our stuff gets uh, put first. Yeah. Yes. We're on um, – I got uh, – we're on Amazon Prime. And yeah. I, I keep getting an email saying, that you're not using Amazon Music. Apparently, you can use it all for free. I went, oh, why am I paying for Deezer if we can use Amazon for free? Turns out it's not free. But uh, because you have to pay extra for the music. But anyway, but I went on the podcast bit and we're on there as well. We are, yes. Yeah, that's great. That was exciting. That was good. It's nice to see us everywhere. Yeah. It's because we were just in one place for so long. Yeah. 
And can I tell you, Andy, the uh, subscribers are growing. Really? I don't know what the analytics are. For. I, mean, I, I need to do an anal analytics check on all the other s sound things, but for YouTube, um, we, we, we've gained 55 subscribers in the last 48 days, so... Oh, which is not good. bad. It's not bad. It's a nice time, but like I say, I, I, I think I think it must be doing really, 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 really well in Paraguay. Yeah, those par Paraguayans. Paraguayans. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, they can't get enough. But is Paraguay the plural? Like, yeah, yeah it could be. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> it could be. Let's leave that there for <laughs> accidentally say something racist and get. <laughs> no, yeah, it's like we start a war with Paraguay. Frame by frame <laughs> versus Paraguay. Oh, let's frame by frame. Let's make it a country. Make a country, country frame by frame. Country frame by frame. These no, are no, these days. We love Paraguay. They have really interesting architecture. Beaches. Yeah, I'm <laughs> on the beach. Architectural beaches. <laughs> I don't know. So what are we going to talk today about? In I can't say anything until I know the clock's ticking, otherwise I just talk random shite until you say that. Oh, yes. Okay. Andy, the clock is ticking. We are back in tick -tock. Tick -tock. Tick -tock. Tick -tock. Now, here's Mr. Midnight, Jack Dallas. Oh, good evening, Night Owls, and thank you for allowing me into your living rooms once again. Well, Night Owls, we've got a heck of a show in store for you tonight, and I'm very excited for you to see it all unfold before your very eyes. I really hope you love it. God, I hope you love it. Please love it. Love it. I'm trying to host a national syndicated talk show. And I'm trying to help you keep it on the air. We all know how important it is to keep our sponsors and affiliates happy, but in my humble opinion, there is only one person who really matters in this whole darn crazy business. And that is you, our viewer. You're meddling with things you don't understand. Whoa! Now, as you know, here on Night Owls, we think it's very important to keep an open mind. Please welcome Dr. June Ross Mitchell and Lily, the young subject of the book, Conversations with the Devil. I really don't think it's a good idea, Jack. She's becoming more unpredictable. That's a good thing. That's why we still do black TV. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for a live television first as we attempt to commune with the devil. Lily, can you hear me? Good to see you again, Jack. Lily, return to me. This isn't about ratings anymore. No one's going anywhere. How could you let it happen, Jack? How could you let it happen? Please be warned, anyone with young children in the room. Go to commercial! Go to commercial! What you're about to see... You okay, Jack? ...is profoundly disturbing and shocking. You get out there, Mr. Midnight. And you knock him dead. Wow. So a film come out, right? <laughs> it came out a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. It's called Late Night with the Devil. And it got very good reviews. And I'm on a lot of like horror channels and everyone's going raving about it. So yes. I was really excited to watch it. And then we watched it. And then I'm like, ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's not uh, scary. It, it's, it's definitely not, not, it's not. It's not a horror film. No, definitely I've, not a horror I've, film. It, it it tries to uh, make you think that there is, there are horror moments in it, but they're not. No. They're, they're, you can you can watch that in in your dungeon in a basement, and it would still feel like a really cozy basement dungeon. It would. Be, because yeah. it's not scary. I mean, you, you don't feel. Yeah. Um. Late night with the devil. Yeah. What do we know about this film? I mean, it came out just late last year. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it was. Did it do like a the the festival run last year, and it yeah. took a while to come out? It's a should have film, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it's it's the concept is there. The idea is sound. I mean, I mean everything about the about about this film could have been so different. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, if we'd, if I, we'd written it. Yeah, yeah. I made, I made it good. Yeah. Wow, how arrogant. Wow, yeah. <laughs> but what's, I think why it did so well and why people talk about it is yeah. because I need to, I, I need to admit that I'm middle aged now and I've seen a lot of films. I'm 45 years old. So, not a lot of people that are really getting into horror have seen all the films we've seen. Exactly. So haven't seen the films that this basically is standing on the shoulders of. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So people seeing this go, oh my God, this is something really new. This is great. Well, it's not. It's been done before. I mean, it, it, yeah. I'm better by better. the BBC. <laughs> yeah, even though, you know, we don't even have the BBC anymore, as far as I'm concerned, but that they did one yeah. thing right back in 1992. Yeah. And that was Ghostwatch. I mean, and, and even Red Letter Media bring up Ghostwatch in their conversation because they know that it was better than what this was. This... Uh, I do actually want to just caveat that with saying, I actually think this is a good film. Yeah, it is it, actually it, a well-made film. It's a well-made what it film. Is. It's kind of like a Twilight Zone. The exactly movie, that. it's kind yeah. of, it kind of has, it, it's got its own quirk, but it's not a horror. It's just a, a suspenseful, um, it's well, it's a, a thriller or it's, no, it's a drama. It's a dramatization, and it, but it's actually more humorous and yeah. tongue in tongue in cheek. It's caricatures. I mean, yeah. you don't really feel anything for any of the characters at all. You don't really feel like they are real people. You don't really feel as though you 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 fit in their big clown shoes. Yeah. basically yeah, yeah, yeah. because you don't yeah, yeah you, you can't really relate to that i mean even that the wife who was dying was was not a real person dying it wasn't it didn't make any sense in in that kind of humanity i didn't feel anything and that's it didn't the thing. Uh, but but I, when you when you when you talk about the when it's in the film it addresses yeah. those things it's addressed as as in a sensational way isn't it it's all like Late night TV. Yeah, the anchor has been through this. This is this. What he's been through and all that, and it's all like overdubbed. Yeah. It's all sensationalized, isn't it? Which is part yeah. of fits within the film's yeah. narrative. So. Which which works because they do feed off of all all the late shows and all the TV daytime shows. They feed off Jerry Springer. They feed off Oprah. They feed off uh, Doctor Phil and uh, yeah. That there's Conan O'Brien. I mean, there's Gialmo from uh, from Jimmy Jimmy uh, the not the Jimmy Fallon but the other Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Uh, Kim, Kim, Kimmel. Kimmel, yeah. I mean, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. It's it more it felt more Jimmy Kimmel in this in the set the actual design of it. Yeah, I very much yeah. like Kimmel by the way because he's merciless when it's coming to trolling Trump all the time. So that's nice. That's it. That's that's yeah. He's a uh, he's he's doing well with that. Um, <laughs> You know, no, but but like you say, I mean, the, the in fact, Kimmel did one thing where he had Matt Damon tied to a chair for an entire episode. Yeah, well, he had this ongoing thing with the didn't with he? At Matt the end Damon. of every, with the end of every sh show, he'd put so sorry we couldn't get around to Matt Damon. It was just a gag he put in every one, yeah, and it exactly. Grew and then and it, grew it, up it blew up. up. But to me, I feel more invested, and I felt more more, uh, you know, connected. I think there's a it's about connection to the material, and that's yeah. a, I mean late night TV is 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 a is an entertainment broadcasting thing. It's basically there to make you feel relaxed, calm, and just kind of gloss over. You you you're passive when you're watching late night television. Yeah, it's just all everything is kind of easygoing, not complicated, and that's that's where this kind of misfires in that in that gross direction of of not hitting its mark when it or making it feel real yeah because it wants to make it too much like a stage play it's a stage play it is it'd be a very good one as well it I'd would very be an amazing one. That. yes yeah I mean, which is the point i was actually going to make here so yeah go for it uh, oh no well that, that's it it'd make a really good stage play <laughs> but didn't you just but, feel like you were watching a play and, that, and the, even the audience is not connected to the material. Yeah. There was no connection to the reality of that situation. If it was, 
if they were trying to make it a real situation that that was actually happening, there would be chaos earlier, a lot earlier. People would be walking out. There would be a lot more yelling. It would be. I suppose the because it's it's you know the, the 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 idea of it. It's all on Halloween night, and yeah, I guess if you were in the audience, you would not know what's being staged and what's not because it's a Halloween episode. Yes, that's that's kind but of you, true. Yeah, so you probably would stand more because you wouldn't be thinking, oh, well, that stage, that's that's too much. That guy's on that. You know, you'd be thinking, oh, this is all part of it. Uh, to a certain extent, yeah. To a certain extent, yeah. To a until certain extent, yeah. The yeah. little girl's head splits open and light starts coming out of it. But, <laughs> but it, thinking, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but it's so tongue in cheek. I mean, it's like, it was it really like is, she yeah. was like a character from Hair, from Hairspray. <laughs> Very it's good. Like, I'm looking at you now. Baltimore. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole gaze that she had. I mean, they're trying to make it creepy, but that's the. I don't and it know. wasn't. That's the thing, right? Why did they not make it creepy, Andy? You could make it creepy. You could have got. Yeah. You could. You should have been able to make that character creepy, surely. Yeah, but that girl. All they did was was. But it was a caricature of of the creepy girl trope. Yeah. And it, but it not. I say not done well, but done to the direction of those two brothers who directed it. I think they're brothers, yeah. right? Yeah, they are, yeah. yeah. They're, um, I've forgotten their names now. Colin and Craig, I think, or something. Yeah. Something uh, like that. Brothers Cameron and Colin. Yes, of course, Craig. Uh, yeah, Cameron Cans and Colin Cans. Distributed by Shudder. So, you know, it's... It, yeah, so they didn't make it creepy at all because they... I don't think they understood how to translate the medium of late night television in, into kind of a horror scenario that actually fit. Yeah. The two the two worlds are so far apart. So it, right, we're both. So why did this review so well then? If we're not as keen or as because I would like to say because so many people were saying so many great things about it even like Empire give it four stars oh well they give everything four stars but um <laughs> I, I, yeah because yeah, it gets on the poster if it gets on the poster then they've got Empire on their poster it, it sells yeah. more magazines that's all it is uh, that's the cynic in me <laughs> yeah yeah cynical get cynical get but it's true yeah it is true uh, but it just yeah, it was just I was watching it and I thought, well, this is all right. I mean, this is okay. I'm not, you know. It's well know. made. It's well put it's together. Well made. It like has that. The era that it's set in, which is like the 70s, isn't it? it they yeah. do all that really well. That's all very good. Yeah, like it. And there's some nice, like, little long shots and that and little long shots. Hmm. Little long shots, yeah. I'm six in terms of But you've got the Oliver Stone opening where they show all the atrocities of the world yeah. all shot together, you know, and. They take liberties. I mean, this is not this is not meant to be a found footage film. So no. in a way, the format of it is 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 not focused. It's not a focused piece. It's not a focused film that has something recognizable. It's not. It 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 doesn't tell uh. you that it's a late night show. It tells you that it, this is a stage performance. This is the preamble. And this is the stuff afterwards. It even has a dream sequence in it. Yeah. Shot in the, shot with the same cameras <laughs> that they use for the actual. So it, it it doesn't even try to disguise any of it. Yeah. Do you think it would have worked better if they would have just stuck with one trope? Do you know what I mean? If you yeah. would have just said, right, this is a late night show, but we'll film it as in them trying to film a late night show and all the stuff going wrong as opposed to. Because it's not really a found footage film, but they're kind of trying it. For it, to be, a found for it film. to be a found footage film, and you've got to remember this is a movie. <clears throat> you you choose to pay to go and see a movie because uh, because of the experience that you're going to get. Yeah. Likely you've you've read the review or you've seen a trailer. You kind of know what you're going in for, right? Yeah. Late night television is passive. You don't pay for it. You don't go into it knowing what you're going to get because you know exactly what you're going to get because it's the same all the time. So yeah. to actually put um, the passive nature of, of television into a movie would be wrong because that's just television. 
Yeah. If it's a movie, it has to be more. But then I think it could have just been more like a film like Network or a film where you don't have to shoot it like it's just on that one set. Just follow the character like like Taxi Driver. Just follow him. Mm. It, and, and just make it as a, a normal movie. He goes home. He's got this idea for this thing. He discusses it with the production team. The, make it into a, just a normal film and then just have the film from his point of view, not from stage camera point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. then you've got a movie. Then you are invested. Then you feel as though he is a real character. Yeah. So, yeah that that's that's my take <clears throat> on, on yeah. the actual the actual sort of, format. Yeah, I get you. We sort of does um, him a disservice because he's really good. He is really good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you you, you get that. What's his the actor's name? It's Jack Delroy's the character. Is it David Das Melchin or something like that? His name. Yeah, I mean, he's done things before. Yeah, he has. He was um, in Suicide Squad, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. He that's was in that. the one. He's Polka Dot Man. Yeah, that's it. Polka, Polka Dot Polka Man. Polka Dot Boy Man. And so so when you kind of look at this on the surface, I mean, the, the performances are exactly what were intended, what was needed for this film. Yeah. Yeah, so you can't knock the performances. You can't knock the... the <clears throat> the technical design, the aspect of, of how it was made. It's just the story and, and the actual delivery of it, I think, that and, and the fact that it's been... Yeah. I think, I guess, that's what, what I was trying to get at. I think if you'd... This would be really fresh to someone in the 20s who maybe yes. not seen Ghost Watch or Network. Uh, so you're watching, you're like, well, this is something... You know, I, I've, yeah. I've watched all the classic horror films, and this is something fresh I've not seen before. So really, so ergo, it's a great film. But when you have seen yeah. Ghost Watch, which you know, for anyone who's listening who's not seen it, it was this um, fake documentary that was set in Halloween that the BBC did. It's got Michael yeah. Parkinson in it. And, it was a uh, dramatization. It wasn't a dramatization. It wasn't yeah. meant to be, uh, but 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 genuinely scary. Yeah, it was genuinely scary because it until was, the end when it all hell breaks loose and yeah which is kind of how most third acts work for uh, for any anything like that they had to kind of end it with a bang yeah and the problem was is trying to get parky to act yeah when 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 michael parkinson is doing michael parkinson he's great he's great when michael parkinson's now having to act scared because the possessed possessed yeah possessed (laughs) yeah possessed yeah round and round the garden like a teddy bear i mean you know (laughs) Yeah. Teddy bears again. Teddy bears are always scary. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, exactly. But th- it's because what we saw was exactly how it would have been if they actually televised that kind of a program, whether it has ghosts yeah. or not. Yeah. It's a te- it was a telephone. We had telephones all the time in, in the 90s, and they were always exciting you know, to see somebody call- say, well, the phone lines are all um, lit up. Everybody's calling in. Marjorie from from France, she's donating four thousand. Yay! You know it's all that. Yeah. So we were we were fully invested in that because that was exactly the format and the delivery as how we would see it. Plus, it was made for television. Yeah. It was television mimicking television made for television. If it was made into a movie, it would not have had the same effect. Okay, but then was late night with the devil made for television? Because it was made by Shudder. Shudder's an online thing. Very rarely did it go out in the cinemas. You're right. It's like it, but they, they, it shouldn't have been a movie. Yeah. Then it, it's packaged as a movie. And when you package something as a movie, <clears throat> it, it becomes something else. So it has then, maybe it was made for television, which would have worked better. And then some bigwig has kind of gone, you know what? We could actually turn this into something bigger. We could turn this into a film and we'll get it in the actual cinemas. There's, they some, were prob- there's some more to it than that. Yeah, and I think it, it did have limited release. It did have a, a, a release in cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think, like we said, it works. It would work so well. I mean, when I was sitting there watching it, I thought this would be an amazing stage play. It, it would, would be, it really it would. It would be an amazing right. audible dramatization. Mm. It's, I mean, the, the visual stuff is important, though, to kind of ground you in that universe. Um, but I, and 
one thing about the set design, I have to say, the you know that whole trope of the coloured lines going around in rainbow shapes. That yeah. Is, that, that is so commonly now attributed to things that happen in the sixties and seventies. Uh, okay. It's it, it's not true of what was actually art televised because they didn't have all those swirly patterns those swirly patterns is actually a modern day representation of what what retro is the uno the game the card game uno was, yeah. was the product that actually started that whole uh, wavy line thing that whole retro pattern wow okay i didn't know that and that retro pattern was then attributed to it because if you watch if you watch Dick Cavett if you watch Johnny Carson if you watch Terry Wogan or any of those programs from the seventies not one of them used the wavy lines uh, every set was very very basic very uh, and very simple just even in network if you look at that sets are very basic very simple yeah, very yeah, yeah. Yeah. especially network yeah so it kind of felt like it was too much like uh, a heightened sense of the 70s so it didn't really ground me in the reality of where it was as much as it could do yeah because i was aware that this is a representation of the 70s based on cultural um popular beliefs of what it looked like right okay wow okay yeah we well, just ruined the film <laughs> i think the film <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the uh, the uh, skeptic and the psychic characters. Yeah, okay. They're both so <laughs> huge. The characters are just huge and nuts, aren't they? Then they're not grounded in any reality. Absolutely no. I mean, like you could tell the psychiatrist she's just fame hungry, isn't she? You know. Yeah, and, she is. Yeah. Which is a caricature in itself. He's just the actual. You know, if you ask the child to draw a, a psychic man or a club, or you know, someone who that's the kind of that they draw yes. him. Yeah. Manos, the man, the hands of fate, kind of. Uh, yeah. French, French obscurist kind of look. You know that. that yeah. Uh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> So and yeah. the skeptic looked looked like his brother, really. Yeah, <laughs> slightly older brother. Yeah, and he was so. Yeah, like you say, that none of the characters quite work, do they? It's apart from I think the the the, the host guy. Yeah, I think he does. I think he he's really good. He keeps it. He pulls it together, and I think that you know the uh, the sidekick, who whose head explodes. <laughs> yes. And that, that there was a whole sequence of the worm as well when he's hypnotized and they're trying to, and they show it. And yet would that, would that assume that we ourselves sitting there at home was hip, were hypnotized because we saw the actual footage. Cause we saw the, yeah. Cause we saw so the contrivance of, of that in itself was kind of laughable. Yeah. Because it's like, well, you, you're trying too hard to make us believe. And and it and it kind of just I, I don't know it felt childish the script felt very childish yeah but then it appeals to the younger audience I think it does and I think that's again what I was what I was trying to say is yeah if you hadn't seen anything like this before this has come across fresh and but yeah. well like ourselves who have seen a lot of similar films and a lot of horror and a lot of, you know, it's only so many times I, 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 an allegedly possessed girl staring into the camera. It's not scary. No, but they try and make that. The it's Scooby-Doo. Scoob it's Scooby-Doo it stuff. It really is. But yeah, just, you know, they're going to say, Oh yeah. You know, she needs to keep looking into the camera way longer than she should do. And then people watching this will think this, you know, she's staring at them. No, it's just like, stop it. It's not. Go away. Work. Stop it. And she keep, she kept on saying things. It's like it's like now insert creepy girl line here. The yeah. script itself sounds. It, 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 you know we were talking about AI writing things. This yeah. script felt very AI written. Well, hasn't it come into some sort of controversy because the credits were done by AI apparently? Ah. Oh, they, right. they used AI or, or to some part of this film they used AI to do it and. They, 
they came onto some scrutiny. You know, people, really, yeah, scrutiny for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to keep coming in, and then yeah, the resistance is is going to be strong. But yeah, I don't know. Was it a misfire, or did it was? Is this a successful film? Well, it's been success. It's been successful to the point where I think a lot of people. Right, this is what. Can I just read? Uh, I can't remember whether, but this is the ending little paragraph of a review. Yeah. A smart, original approach makes this much more than just another Exorcist wannabe. You'll sense that there are horrors coming, but you won't feel quite ready. No, it's I disagree waiting. with everything. There. Yeah, that sounds like it's been written by an AI. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't even, there's nothing specific. I've seen this a lot where, um, they're, because they're, they're, I don't know if I told you, but there's a, there's a book on Amazon, which is a, a review of Late Night with the Devil. Okay. It's an actual book and it's like 12 pages book. long. All yeah. Right. And it was written pretty much the day that it came out. It, it was available on Amazon for like £10. I'm going gonna to pull it up and I'm going to read the back of the blurb. So in, insert uh, elevator music here. <laughs> Review. Yes, here we go. I'm going to read this. Go on. Step into the enigmatic realm of Late Night with the Devil, a film that masterfully explores the sinister corners of the human psyche. Shadows and Suspense is your essential companion to this chilling journey offering an in-depth exploration of a movie's suspenseful narrative, thematic depth, and psychological complexity. This guide is not just a pathway to understanding the film's dark narrative, it's an invitation to explore the labyrinth of human nature itself. Through detailed analysis, behind-the-scenes insights, and comprehensive breakdowns, this book peels back the layers of the film providing a richer, more engaging viewing experience. Discover the symbolism, narrative techniques, and character studies that make Late Night with the Devil a standout piece in the psychological keeps on, psychological thriller genre. Uh, whether you're a film enthusiast, a student of psychology, or a fan of thrillers, insert whatever you want to be here, I'm just saying. This guide will enhance your appreciation for the artistry and narrative intricacy of this compelling movie. Dive deep into its themes, explore its cinematic craftsmanship, and uncover the secrets behind its suspense and storytelling. Embark on this cinematic journey with Shadows and Suspense, navigating the darkness of Late Night with the Devil. Enhance your... Uh, yeah. Oh, there's more. There's more. <laughs> Enhance your understanding, appreciate the artistry, and experience the thrill of unraveling one of the most captivating psychological thrillers. Get your copy today and transform, transform, transform your viewing experience into an exploration of the human condition's darkest corners. That's a book. That's the blurb of a book. Jesus Christ. So take out any time it says Late Night with the Devil and insert, I don't know, Deer Hunter. Yes. It'd, it'd just be, <laughs> or Star Wars, or Indiana Jones, or... Fucking Rambo. Exactly. And these books appear, and it's 10.99, Late Night with the Devil, and it's it's by Amos Donald. And which is a, which is an app, probably. <laughs> which is probably an app, and it's making you believe that this book is available. Don't buy it, people. Do not buy it. Just because you see a book that has... Okay, look, look, look. That's the front cover. It's a generic front cover, if I can... Why would anyone buy that? That's it. it it's... Wow. But they're out there, and I can imagine that people will... Who are oh, they're excited about this film. I'd love to get some material on it. Um, and, you know, a review. If you want to go for a review, you want to either listen to Frame by Frame. Yes. Obviously. Or yeah. you go to BFI. And you buy their glorious guides to to books that are actually good about films that are actually good. That's it. Now this film, what we're talking about, <laughs> it gets likened to other films, doesn't it? Because I want to get away from it now. You want to get away everyone, from it? Yeah, because everyone says, um, "Late Night with the Devil." It's like The Exorcist mixed with Network. Network. No, it's not. 
But <laughs> talk about what I would consider one of the greatest films ever made. Step into the enigmatic realm of <laughs> Network. <laughs> A film that masterfully explores the sinister corners of the human psyche. But it does. And it does. I mean, it I, does. Keep whole... going, I like this. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> network. It, it, you're a, it, a network, the shadows and suspense is your essential companion to this chilling journey, offering an in-depth exploration of the movie's suspenseful narrative, thematic depth, and psychological complexity. I'll skip through to the next reference to uh, the actual book's title. Discover the symbolism, narrative techniques, and character studies that make Network a standout piece in the psychological thriller genre. Oh, yeah. And now, the distinguished television news commentator, Mr. Howard Beale. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like at this moment to announce that I will be retiring from this program in two weeks' time because of poor ratings. Since this show was the only thing I had going for me in my life, I have decided to kill myself. I'm going to blow my brains out right on this program a week from today. What the hell's going on? Prepare yourself for a perfectly outrageous motion picture. Howard Beale went up there last night and said what every American feels, that he's tired of all the bull... Six, Diana, we're talking about putting a manifestly irresponsible man on national television. I am not putting Howard back on the air. It's not your show anymore, Max. It's mine. I got a feeling I'm being made. You are. I got to warn you, I, I don't do anything on my first date. We'll see. I want a show developed based on the activities of a terrorist group. Well, I'm mad. I want to make a TV star out of you. Just like Archie Bunker. There is no America. There is no democracy. There is only IBM and DuPont and Exxon. And you have meddled with the primal forces of nature. And you will atone. Am I getting through to you, Mr. Beale? Why me? It was your own television, dummy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Network News Hour with Howard Beale. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Things have got to change. How many stations first, does this go out You've got to get mad. You've got to say... I want you to get up right now. Go to your windows, stick your head out, and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Are they yelling in Atlanta, Herb? Are they yelling in Atlanta, Ted? Network by Patty Chayefsky, directed by Sidney Lumet, produced by Howard Gottfried. Television will never be the same. Well, now, is Network a horror film? It's apps, yes. Yes. It's many things. Isn't it? it? Not, not in the. Um, you, you text me something that was brilliant where you said to me, um, just watch Late Night with the Devil. Network is far scarier. Yes. It is. Yeah, it really, really is. What I found, because we watched it again recently, and because I've been a little bit obsessed with the Trump trial, I've been watching that, I'm like, oh, my God, nothing's changed. <laughs> the, the, that film is it's on the nose. It's on the nose. It, it, it really is. And it, it, it the, the themes are so brilliant and dense with it. It's... Yeah. You know, you're talking about a character study, it's brilliant. Talk about people's psychological issues, it's brilliant. Yes. Talk about fuck it, what people about do. Corrupt, to, corruption about and corruption and, and, and scandal and and the abuse of, of people when it comes yeah. to trying to, to get rated for the sake of ratings. Yeah. 
I mean, it's 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 wh why right? Okay, so why? I, I know it's it, it is well regarded this film, but it's never really discussed. Not really in the all time great films, is it? You know, you, you get The Godfather, you get Goodfellas, you get, you know, or yes. whatever it might be. But it's never really discussed. And it's sort yeah. of like, they can't hide it away I because think it's, it's there. It, it, but it's, it's, it's sort yeah. of like, oh, let's not really bring that up too much. Because it's so overpowering, it's so real. And I think the film speaks for itself. Mm. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs> We're done. We can't talk about it. No, no, but it does. It, and, and I think people are afraid of it as well because it is so uh, so real, so true. So, I mean, it's supposed to be satire. And to me, satire kind of makes me think, oh, we're, we're supposed to be able to actually sit back and enjoy this and kind of feel amused by it. Yeah, because satire is sort of holding a mirror up to society, but saying, ha ha, ha ha, ha. Yeah, it's real, but well, let's laugh about it because we could. This, this, this is absolutely terrifying. Yeah. The player is it? satire. The player is satire, and that yeah, the is, player is satire. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you can because yeah, yeah. you, you enjoy the story, and you know it's a happy ending, and it's all yeah. And, it, and it, sort of Doctor Strange Love is satire. Yeah, and that's hilarious. Yeah, it's fun. But, the, but but network is not fun. This is not fun. It's. It's horrifying. Weirdly, though, uh, when because Tracy had not seen it before, she said, "Well, at the end of it, she goes, I kept thinking of Bo Burnham's Inside." Yes. While I was watching it, she said, "Because she goes, I'm just literally, I'm watching art telling me exactly how the world works." Yes, as art. As art, and I was like, "Wow, why didn't I think of that, you profound, profound. wife?" <laughs> yeah. But that isn't that what we said right. about doing this podcast. You know, we we we, we talked about content when we did Bo Burnham. Burnham. And yeah. We're complaining about the world being too much wrapped around the idea of of let's make more content. Yeah. And we were actually making content. Yeah, that's the. A network is a film that made money, that 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 had to pay actors, that gave people jobs, and and everybody who actually worked on that film. Um, got the accolades, Academy Award nominations, and all of that, yeah. and yet it's talking about the absurdity of all of it. Yeah, and how corrupt it all is. Exactly. It's. I mean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I mean, network, I mean it, it's, it's we a could story. probably we could probably have a run of podcasts just talking about this film. We could probably talk about this for the next year. This film. You could, but then you, you'd really get exhausted. I think it, 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 yeah. is, it is a very exhausting narrative. I mean, okay, what is Network about in a nutshell? <laughs> well, I get okay, it. No, on the surface. A late night, well, he, uh, uh, a, ho a guy hosts uh, a TV show that's losing its... He's a news viewer. anchor. He's a news anchor. He's a news anchor. It's losing his viewers yeah. and we get rid of him. Yeah. And he has a sort of breakdown. He has one breakdown and they and you'd think, you know, it, you know, if we have one breakdown on television, they usually bury it, get rid of it and say that it didn't happen. Let's move on. You know where he's found out and he goes back on what you think is going to be the last time and he says, I'm going to come back next yeah. year. I'm going to park. Sorry, I'm going to park next week. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself live on TV. Yeah. I'm going to blow my head off live on TV for you all to watch me. And no one notices apart from the other so people go, What's he just yeah. said? Isn't that weird? It's it's brilliant. Isn't it? At that point, Tracy just grabbed my hand. She went, I think this is going to be one of the best films I've ever seen. <laughs> really? Yeah, just it's that moment. Amazing. Because. Yeah, because... I, yeah. Nobody reacts, and they're just carrying on as if nothing happened. Yeah. And well, half of them didn't even notice. Exactly. And then some people just kind of went, what did he just say? Did you hear what he just said? What? I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention. He oh, said he's going to blow it, his brains out on yeah. TV next week. And they're like, no, they don't even believe it. They don't even think, oh, okay. You, you know. Because that's Just an, that. Just yes. that. is says so much. It does. It's brilliant. It's utter brilliance. Yeah, and and it seems so simple, and and you, and I, I can imagine 
the audience that watched Nightlight with the Devil would would watch Network and say, "Don't get it." Yeah, it, it's just just boring people talking about about he, he, this crazy man. They shouldn't yeah. just, they they just shouldn't, shouldn't let him keep going back on television. That's that's just silly. Uh, it is. <laughs> But on the surface, in the most simple ways, it is silly. You're right, you know. Yeah. But but like you were just saying, like us talking about the Bo Burn thing and about yeah. how everyone's trying to put content out, um, but we're putting content out by saying how we sh- people should really stop <laughs> all this stuff. Yeah, stop listening to us, guys. This is this is absurd. What are you doing? You know, I mean, Howard Beale is the character, isn't it? He's the only one who's actually talking the truth. Yeah. No curse about that. I just care about the ratings that he's getting and exploiting it exactly. that. Exactly. To it's like, uh, look at the numbers. I mean, okay. Yeah. If, if all of a sudden you you did something kind of weird on this stream on on, on this uh, podcast, or you said something that was really bogus, and all of a sudden we we started to get thousands and thousands of hits. No, millions. We started to get yeah. millions of hits. Yeah. Know, because you said something radical or something that's deeply disturbing. Yeah. Would we then have a meeting afterwards to say, Andy, no, we're, we're monetized. We're actually getting paid to do this now. We're, 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 we're getting people messaging us wanting to be our sponsors. Yeah. Uh, what do, do we carry on? Do keep doing this thing that, you know, maybe, maybe you just, you ranting about, um, about something. I don't know. Just say you're going to f- chicken. Okay. You, like, Again, yeah, you gotta do it on, uh, stream, on it's really stream. Comfortable last time I did it. You're gonna, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna stream it on YouTube uh, uh, for every single preview of frame by frame, and then all of a sudden millions of people are tuning in because they want you to, to want to see you with that chicken. Would yeah. you go through with it? Because all of a sudden people are talking about us. They're not talking about the Trump trial anymore. They're talking about us and this crazy lunatic who says that he will keep making podcasts as long and uh, as long as he gets <laughs> chicken. Uh, in order to bring you in, he will actually sit there and himself inside a chicken. Okay, yeah. right? Okay. The slogan could be, what came first, the chicken or Andy? But the... <laughs> Andy, I'm not serious. I don't want us to actually start working on this and shopping this. But we could turn it to like, you know, that bit in, Ro- in Rocky where he's trying to catch the chicken. We could have that bit. We could like parody Rocky. Oh, it could just go. <laughs> do you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Um, <laughs> but then all of a sudden, we don't know why, but people want to see this. And, yeah. and I go to you, Andy, and Andy, they, they seriously want to see this happen. Are you going to... No. <laughs> right. Answer. Correct answer. Okay. Uh, yeah. And ironically, um... I'm going to have the quack <laughs> all over this, so it might as well have been a duck. Yeah. Well, for this one, make it a chicken. So, is that a chicken? I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll find one. Yeah. But yeah, you doing something to a chicken. Yeah. Uh, at, the, at the very beginning of every episode, forget the clock is running. Everybody's going to want the chicken t-shirts, and it all of a, all of a sudden you become a chicken man, <laughs> a chicken man, Andy. And instead of the clock is running, it's the the, <laughs> cock, the cock the cock is running. <laughs> the cock is crying. <laughs> The chicken is done. Uh, <laughs> but that's it. I mean, it, that's the absurdity of this film. The absurdity yeah. is, okay, they, they are, they, they've seen this man that is at the end of his, of his, of his tether, right at the edge of, of killing himself. Yeah. And they think, let's exploit it because we're, 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 we're going to be rich from this. We're going to be, we're going to be made from this. This is going to be, but the thing is their, their lives are not changed. Those TV anchors are still going to get paid the same wage. Yeah. It's not as if they're suddenly like raking in pots of money. They are seriously that misguided that they are right behind their their news station so far that they they can't see that it's actually not doing any good for them at all in their own personal life. Nah. No. That's that's it. It's it's all because about the, the network. It's all about the network. The brainwashed to 
just yeah. chase that ratings. That's all that That's matters. Chasing that ratings. ratings exactly. That's all that matters. It's, it is amazing. And, and there are different different parts of that. I mean, Faye Dunaway, obviously, she's... F- sleep- Faye, Faye Dunaway with a bra, am I right? She did away. Well, she did away. Well, I, I, and she, put she, a bra on, Faye. <laughs> put, put it all on. Yeah, put it out. And, and do you know I what? Even she's been Robert Deval was in this, you know. I forgot yeah. Robert Deval was in this, and there he was. Yelling, like, like he's in the Apocalypse Now, you know. It's, it's yeah. so... He's he's so underrated, uh, Robert Duvall, because he he just performs as as people who are just real people, and yeah. that's it. He, he never actually he's never a character actor. You never ever see him in wigs. He's always just Robert Duvall. He is, and he's like he's he, mad he, as he, hell. the man. Yeah, and the man did not age in like thirty years, did he? Exactly. He just always looked the same. <laughs> yeah, him and Steve Martin. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's it is bizarre because. This film, it's got crusty old men yelling, and it's yeah. like that. It, it seemed to not, not saying that, 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 that all men are crusty and old, but um, it's like Columbo and all these old old people in jackets were the ones that we listened to and paid attention to. They were our role models back then. So they're kind yeah. of saying that news anchors had such an influence on people that. They would actually just do what they tell them to do: go and stand up, out, stand up from the TV, go and open the window and yell, "I'm mad as hell." I'm not going to take, take it anymore. That that they had that power. Incredible. I and mean, now, yeah. now who, who has that power? Taylor Swift. Exactly. I mean, how it, how the the actual the, the face of the of the delivering message has changed so much because it has to be now something something so different and I, I think what I'm trying to say is that we seem to be going into more divine creatures rather than uh, people who, who look like our Uncle Fred Yeah, you know, or just everyday people I mean these were just everyday anchors who look like old like your, like your granddad you know, just delivering the message and, and they were you trusted them because why wouldn't you trust your granddad? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But now we trust Taylor Swift. Yeah, all like news anchors now it's all weird. look like yeah. Yeah, all news anchors now that were... they all look like you know they go to the gym for about seven hours a day. <laughs> you well, know, they're all and... they're all polished stones. Yeah. But they are stones nonetheless. They're not yeah. really with any personality. I mean. Well, yeah, I was going to say there all there is no real in sort of news now. There's, they're all they're basically just robots. They're yeah. reading that auto cue. They haven't really yes. got any opinions for themselves. Well, they but they do have or opinions do. unless you're Sky Australia. Then they have got opinions unless they're Fox and Sky. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, or if they do have an opinion, it's politically motivated. Yeah, and it's like, well, because you you can see these. Uh, news anchors giving their opinions and it's like that is not your job that is not your job you are meant to be a robot just reading the news just telling us yeah. what it is there are supposed to be uh, correspondents on the ground at, at, at the places where these things are happening telling us how it is and how it's supposed to be yeah but we we've gone so far beyond that now that we just can't trust anything that we watch and anything that we see yeah that's true I mean, are they going to make us go and stand out the window and clap? Yes, they are. Well, funnily enough, I was going to make, again, that point of uh, the our version of this film is that. It's go out and clap but all the, the nurses, all yeah. the people on the front line during COVID. But, Which... the, but the, the reality of that was PPE being sold to their own people, you know, it, the whole like, politically behind the scenes was just full of corruption. Exactly, because they didn't the, give a shit about the NHS. If anything, the Tory government is trying to get rid of the NHS. The doctors Quick. and the nurses were all like, they they did not appreciate the clapping. No, because they said that's not helping us. You know, that's just basically giving us false. Uh, it, it's a false sense of of achievement, where there isn't that they weren't achieving. They they yeah. were struggling, but instead of like in 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 this, Beale trying to waken 
uh, I, I, you know, I pop this up and saying I'm mad as hell, and you know, I'm not going to take it anymore. We're going out clapping to to support a narrative that's been driven by the news. <laughs> Did you ever clap? Uh, no, no, I didn't clap. No, I, 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 I felt I felt something wasn't right. Yeah, I always felt during the whole thing that the the whole thing wasn't right. I was kind of fortunate because Tracy works; she's a commission manager for NHS, and I shouldn't say too much about that. But she was talking with from within the industry about what was happening. Yeah, and the narrative that you were getting on the news did not fit what was actually happening within the NHS. There was a hero worship going on on uh, for everybody because they needed to feel safe. They needed to feel as though the NHS were going to be were the ones who were saving us. Yeah. And they needed people needed that assurance because otherwise there would have been chaos. There would have been more it was a control mechanism. It's all about control. It is. And that's kind of what this film's about as well, but yeah. Um, yeah, but the the reality of that situation in some places, not all places, were a lot of people sat around in a hospital that was pretty much empty, saying, we'd like to help people. Why can't the sick people come here that actually need to come here and need help? Because we're not getting anybody else at the minute. But they were keeping hospitals empty <laughs> in case COVID. Yes. For, the actual people who needed help weren't allowed to get the treatment because <clears throat> they're saying the hospitals were full, but not all of them were, you know. But anyway, it's yeah, I totally get that because uh, we, we we had to go into the hospital a couple of times, and there weren't there weren't it wasn't like anything that you'd seen. Yeah. So I I can I can, yeah that, I, everything always felt a little bit weird. Yeah. All these places were actually open instead. Like uh, they, they built a hospital in London, didn't they? That massive place. Didn't yeah. hear about that again. No. We, 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 I, I think all the um, there was like all these machines built and all these special beds that were made. That then now, I think each bed cost. I can't remember. So let's say it was five hundred quid. It probably wasn't. But, but a lot. The, a lot but, of money. Yeah, there were a lot of money, and now they they have to sell them on for like twenty quid just to try and get rid of them. Yeah, because they have all these beds that are not being used. You know, the whole thing was it just felt wrong, didn't it? The whole yeah. thing felt wrong. It it all felt like there. It, it was like the, that. That's the thing. I can't have an opinion. I can't say either way what was going on, what was right. But I knew that there was something that wasn't right, and I, but I couldn't say what it was. And I yeah. think there's that people who have, uh, who are so confident that they know that this person is right, this person is wrong. You can't. Nobody can actually have any confidence as to whether what narrative is is right and what narrative is wrong. Yeah. So if anything, we would we would have been opening. No idea. Up, we'd have been opening our windows and shouting, "I'm am as ambivalent as hell. I'm probably going to have to wait to see what happens." Yes. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> that's all it was, just sitting there waiting to see yeah. what happens. And that's like this film. We we are powerless because we are only watching it. And Network, you know, if if that actually happened, it would have been such a, a fascinating part of, of, of American history. That kind of reaction response would never, ever happen. But it has. What? Yeah, that, we 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 you know it would never have happened then because it was a fable, it was a parable, it was a, a it was this is this is amusing because this is what could happen to us, but then it has happened. That's the that's the scary that's thing. The absurdity of it all, it, yeah. is, it is, and especially now with what's what's happening with this election in in America, there there shouldn't be an election with 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 that con candidate. There, no, that, that that should not be an election. He's, this is a crime trial. Yeah, not an election. But the thing is, people are so intrinsically tied to what Donald Trump is. He is the Apprentice. He's a celebrity. He's been on late night shows, Andy. He 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 entertains people. 
he's been in Home Alone. He's he's done all this stuff. He's an entertainer. So what we are watching is not a political election. This is entertainment. It is. It's, it's entertainment. Also, we we've discussed. We've talked about this before. But there's a lot of disenfranchised people out there yeah. that don't have a great life. And if someone's yelling at the top of their voice, I'm going to fight for you. Okay, you you live here. Well, I'm one of you. Yes. I'm not a billionaire crook. I'm one of you. And if you vote me in, I your life will be better. Yeah. And then you've got a guy on the other side who will basically say, well, things aren't well. Things are going to be hard. We've got we, things. We to need change. to. We need to work on stuff. We need to work on stuff. And you go. Well, I want. I want that guy. He's going to make my life better. So, and they'll get brainwashed to hate that guy. They hate the other guy because he's a messenger of, of, of. Yeah, yeah. he's not. I don't want to hear. I want. I want instant I validation out. that yeah, I'm going to be okay. Yeah, I have to work hard to do what? No, I don't want that. Yeah. I want this guy who's going to do that. And then they'll get brainwashed to hate that guy. No matter what, no matter what he says, they'll hate yeah. him. Yeah. Hate him so much. Like, I don't like him. I'm going to vote for him because I hate him so much. Exactly. I'll vote for the devil because God doesn't seem right right now. God's a little, a little bit old and telling, yeah. telling it, how it how it is. And, and of course, everything that, that comes out of Trump's mouth is, is false and untrue. And it's it's like it's it's a fairy tale he's delivering like a th success as as a fairy tale he's dressing up success yeah in in everything he says and everything that he's touched is golden so look at this i've touched this it's gone gold it's now gold yeah. If, yeah. if he's going to touch it it's going to crumble you know yeah. and that's all, all, all the scholars all the leading scholars say that if i touch things it's also gold um um, yeah, yeah, I've got it. So we, it's not Midas anymore. It's Trump touch and everything I've touched towards the gold. All the yeah. scholars say it. All the scientists are saying it. All, all oh, the, yeah. Exactly. All the scientists and all the people, you know, uh, even Taylor Swift, she can't deny that. She can't deny that it's gold. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And by the way, Taylor Swift, she's working for the devil. And um, yeah, she's going to bring yeah. on the Antichrist. Yes. So we don't if want we, that. We don't, we, we, oh. nobody needs that. We, you know, and, and of course, it, it's, it's what so... was scary watching Network again is it reminded me of now. Now, That's exactly. Like what you, now. Exactly what you've just said. It's uh, it's like 1984, isn't it? It's it's someone writing something to say, this could be the future. Let's look, let's yeah. not make this happen. And then certain people go, oh, that sounds good. That sounds great. Yeah, More AI. For us, less for them. Yes, AI, let's do that. cameras, uh, surveillance, chips, let's do it. And now, to me, 1984 doesn't seem as scary. No, because we've kind it, of gone beyond that. Yeah, yeah we have. Oh god, we've we actually who who knew that we'd actually go beyond the the security and the safety of 1984. I wish Orwell would have wrote 2024, and then we could have. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 who's writing the next, you know, thing that we're supposed to be worried about? <laughs> it's and, and that's the thing because because society is always driven by what what it is that we fear. Yeah. You know, and none of it makes sense. Nobody is seeing what things are for real because they just want to feel good. They want to feel. And just like. And that's why Late Night with the Devil works uh, and it is more approachable for people than Network because Network is just too much like a. Too much reality for a Friday night. Remember that line in As Good As It Gets when the yeah. he's trying to get laid with Helen Hunt and the kid is being sick. And he's like, nope, sorry, but this date's over. Too much reality for a Friday night. Everybody wants Helen yeah. Hunt, but they can't yeah. handle the fact that she's got a kid. I don't know what I'm actually trying to say there, but it sounds really, really important. Okay, <laughs> really good. <laughs> I don't know. We we just we just mad as hell and can't take it anymore, Andy. Yeah, I can't take it. We're just gonna have to keep putting up with it. <laughs> so, do you think do you think we can actually get listeners of this podcast to just put down their headset or put down their mobile devices, go and stand up at the window and say, "I'm mad as hell and I can't take it." Do you, do you think we could we would ever have that power? Yes, 
I think, right, anyone listening to this right now, I want yeah. you to get your, your mobile device and record yourself shouting that out of the window. I'll do it. Yeah, just record Let's yourself it. shouting yeah. out of the window. And then I'm, we'll see. Hopefully we'll get more than one. And then we'll put them all together. And then we'll play it at the beginning of next week's podcast. That would be incredible. Let's do that. Let's do that. We'll, we'll, we'll record it ourselves. We'll have our little teaser. Yeah. Trailer. I'm, I'm hoping we get a lot of views, Andy, because it's content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no well, content. Stay away from content apart from us. It's content. This, this content's good. Keep going with this. Yeah, content. come on. We, we, need, we, need, we need to have the content. We need to, I want to see those numbers rise, Andy. It's all about the numbers, right? It's about the share. It is. Yeah. yeah. We want to, we, you know, it'll be 40, 60 next week. It's 40, 60 share. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> so, yeah. So go and watch Network if you Oh, really... Network. It's a brilliant film. It's brilliant. It is. But I, I can understand. I mean, as, when I watched, watched it when I was younger, I, I kind of saw it as, yeah, there's a lot of people talking. I can, I can tell there's a message in this. But yeah. surely... Surely it can never be that bad. Maybe we should watch Punishment Park because that would be the next stage. I don't think I've seen that. Punishment Park. But it's been done a few times recently where it's it's um, basically activists like, like Greta Thulberg. Uh, imagine this scenario. Greta Thulberg has been, has been arrested. Uh, she's been interrogated. She's, she's been told she's got no rights. And uh, if, if she wants to live, she's gonna. Ha- she's basically guilty of of treason, high treason, and all this. So so she's gonna be let loose in the desert, and she's got to run for 24 hours. But she's gonna be hunted by policemen who are wow. hungry for the kill. And if she if she's actually able to reach the flag and raise the flag of, of America, the American flag, and, and then and, and survive. Okay. Then they win. And that's what Punishment Park is. It's the American wow. version of that, of activists, hippies, all being sent out to their deaths and hunted by policemen in a, in a 1970s kind of a, I'd say, a breakdown of society movie. If Trump gets in, yeah, that could possibly happen. Yes. Because if he gets in, it's not going to be what policy is this, what policy is this. He's going to find everybody that's been after him and he'll go after them punishment park we need to talk about that we really do because it is a it is a great film and it's easy to get hold of as well like i can i can uh... yeah i'm sure i'll be able to find it so yeah yeah I, I, i've watched it quite a few times in my lifetime and I, every time i watch it, it it kind of fills me with this fear of what could happen i mean it, like like capricorn one it's the same kind of story oh. as capricorn yeah. one in a way um, because it, the same thing eventually happens to them, the heroes, yeah. are heroes of that space mission. Because unfortunately, things went wrong. They had to be gotten rid of. They had to get yeah. rid of them. Maybe that could be the uh, the double episode. Who knows? That'd be that'd be good. And then we can go on our. We'll carry on on our rant and our rage because our, we our our dystopian, our the dystopian world in which we are now living. Yeah. We've, we've, but, we've got, yeah. We've, we've that's got okay, this. you've got the tube. Just keep looking at the tube. It's all just good. Just keep watching, yeah. Just keep, yeah. You know when this came out, do you know what other films are up for the Oscar? Oh, no. Come on, um, uh, we've come got, on. so, Taxi Driver, All the President's Men, this, but do you know what actually won the Oscar? Rocky. Rocky. Yeah. Of course. So out of All the President's wow. Men, Taxi Driver, and Network... Rocky's the one that won the Oscar. Those three movies together. I mean, all the President's Men is is again. It's about political scandal. It is, yeah. It's about exposing the truth. Because I mean, this film was written and rec- made during um, mm. uh, the ah uh, Vietnam, but it's, but it's the Vietnam War kind of a post era of, of yeah, of but it to, was trying um... to. Break down the Watergate. Year. Watergate. Watergate scandal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's Watergate it. was happening when this. So, I guess everything was kind of centered around that. I guess. Yeah, exactly. So you you've got um, you've got corrupt journalism with network. You've got um, heroes of journalism 
in all the president's men. Yeah. And you've got a man who can't take it anymore. Yeah. He says that he says that line who who is trying to um, get rid of all the all the scum and all the filth and all the, all the things that make make America sad and bad yeah. and, and horrible to live in by assassinating that um, Pal- Al Palpatine wasn't it something very similar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Palpatine. I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine that's where I went, oh, that's a great name for a bad guy. That's what I'm going to call the Emperor. So, yeah, those three movies are, uh, wow. Yeah, they're quite relevant of the time, I guess, and they're a product of the time, but... Yeah. You know, but also very much relevant now. It's fucking... Yeah. Keep coming back to this, don't we? But it's it's the scary times we're living in, you know. It's the... It is. And how people don't see it. They don't. And it, it, it becomes so easy to just be infused with, with Eurovision. Oh, yeah. To be filled, if, to filled in with the idea that there's, there's countries who are all united in song. Yeah. But, and, and, and it's like, we, we, we try not to be cynical. We try not to be sit there and kind of just say, look, that, that you can't have fun in this world. Um, but... I'm I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic I'm, in the future. I'm optimistic that the the you know hopefully there won't be a Tory government in this country very soon. How they could survive an election is beyond me. And then I'm yeah, but you wonder I'm that. Hope- and then how could Trump well, survive? It's like ah, how can I'm, yeah? How, can, how come we're still talking about that? Uh, well, I'm hopeful he won't get in or uh, in November, but the polls suggest otherwise. But then can you trust the polls? Can you trust anything you watch now? Do you exactly? Well what are we supposed to believe? Are people basically just not gonna bother voting because they say, well it's 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 a foregone conclusion. Your vote's not gonna make a difference. So therefore uh, the ones who vote, you know, will end up winning. If Trump gets in, he will utterly demolish democracy. It'll be it's, done. It is. It'll be done. And because he will be then he'll do whatever he can to never not be president. He already started with the wall. That yeah. that, that, that wall was a symbol of him trying to isolate America, um, get rid of NATO, basically become a, an isolated country of, of so called greatness. Um, ignore the because they they he savagely wants to just cut off the rest of the world. Yeah. And that's 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 the plan, and you can smell it a mile off. And it's like, well, do we really need that? Is that what this? You know, I bet he hasn't watched a single episode of Star Trek in his life. Oh. No. <laughs> well, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, you think, well, <laughs> shouldn't we now just be a a one world, a one a one a whole a global community? You know, the internet could could have done that for us. But isn't um, it? Yeah, isn't it well, easy to just? Be, a, be a, a leader of your people to give them the comfort and what they need to live a long and fruitful life. That yeah. that you don't need armies or, or weapons. That if you just look after your people and make friends with other cultures and learn to enjoy other cultures and, and have this, this beautiful network of, 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 of traveling. Network. A network. network. A, a network. But it's it's funny because as soon as you start to attribute those words, it starts to become something else. Yeah. You know, it's like you, no matter how you word it. I mean, no no word is safe. I mean, liberal. The word liberal has completely been trampled on. Yeah. Now to be liberal is to be far left, to isn't be it? Fascist. It's it's yeah. the new fascist uh, left side of, of fascism yeah but liberals should be like well i kind of get what you're saying and i kind of get what you're saying so can we just maybe talk about it you yeah. know oh my gosh isn't that the the isn't that the goal andy <laughs> I, would, I would like it, to think easy. so yeah it's so easy it just fell out your mouth so easily that that you know you know like getting other people's points of views and then talking about it yeah and being able to accept that that's what the network should be. Yeah. Should is a very tricky word. This is starting to sound like a Mark Marin opening. <laughs> really? Should is a very tricky word, people. Yeah. And that's why you should you should get Squarespace. Squarespace. Yeah. Pow! I had to ship Pow. a pen. <laughs> 
Oh, but we, we, you know, we we do mean to be optimistic, and we are, you know, in ourselves, we we do this podcast because we kind of love we love film, and we love the idea that film has messages. And yeah. It, but at the bottom line, it's got the entertainment value is there. But we've got to also realize that you know we're not all just sitting there being fed the whole time. We need to be able to respond to things appropriately. Yeah. Without fear. Without yep. fear. You know. And late night with a devil needed to give us a little bit more fear. Because it gave us the easy ride for for everybody to say, yes, I liked it because it looked good. And it made me feel okay. Yeah, and I'd not seen anything like that before because I'm yes. 20 years old. Yeah, maybe the demographic was just too soft. Yeah, maybe. maybe. But then, you know, reputable new uh, magazines and critics apart from Kermode, which I do still trust that guy. Yeah, I still trust him. This was something fresh and something new, something we hadn't seen before. I'm like, ah, come on. Yes yeah, you are. And, and they are basically looking for viewing and ratings. They are doing, ratings. They're doing the, net, the, the network thing. Yeah. Empire only wants to be seen on posters with those five stars because then people will say, look at that. Empire, five stars. Not the yeah. movie, Empire. Five stars. And it's only just occurred to me now, but they're called Empire. Yeah. The Empire. The Empire strikes back. Yeah. Yeah, the Empire. I stopped. Mm. I stopped buying that magazine years, years and years, almost centuries ago. In fact, at the end centuries of last century, ago. it was a century. It was the last century. The last one I got was in Australia, and it was for uh, Moulin Rouge. On the front cover wow. of Nicole Kidman. That was the last one I ever bought. Do you remember Hot Dog Magazine? That was a good magazine. No, I don't remember Hot Dog yeah. Magazine. Didn't go for very long, but it was really good, really well, really good pieces, really well written. It was... Yeah. But there, there, were, was... there were a number of them. I mean, was it was Film Review was one. Yeah. Um, it's it total film, but that's still going. Flicks. Flicks was one. Flicks was one, yeah. yeah. And Impact Magazine. Impact. Oh, I loved Impact. It was all Hong Action. Kong cinema. Yeah. Action, yeah. See, that makes us happy. But where are they, Andy? Where Where are those happy the mags? Swi- the swimming with the fishes, my friends. Swimming with the fishes. Actually, yeah. they've probably been wrapping my fish. Yeah. Wrap- <laughs> wrapping, wrapping hey, my dead fish, hey. my battered fish. Hey, you write what I tell you to write, so you're going to be wrapping my fish in chips. You yeah. mook. mook. <laughs> So I, I I don't think we can go anywhere else with these. No, with these I think um, sometimes you can't end a podcast with a bang. It ends with a whimper. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, you know where to find us because at the very beginning of the episode, I told you where that war was. Uh, yeah. But I'll tell you again. YouTube. Yes. Um, this Spotify. channel. Right? Spotify. Amazon Podcasts. Audible, yes. iTunes iTunes. All the all the places. All the popular places apart from SoundCloud. Yeah, apart from they, Sound uh, Sound Schloud is what I call it. Yeah. God, down, down with SoundCloud. <laughs> down, down with the cloud. I'm so, mad I'm mad at SoundCloud and I'm not yeah. gonna take it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take, take the subscription I'm not gonna take, anymore. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay any more money to think it's because I'm skin. <laughs> Right, so what are we going to talk about next week, Andy? I don't know. <clears throat> I'm liking the idea of that thing you brought up. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the thing that we can't talk about because it would just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy, for joining us today. Always a pleasure, Stephen. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I hope we're, we're ending on a, on a high point. I'm going to go find a chicken. So Yes. Let's get yeah. those. Let's get those ratings. Let's get those ratings. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's not a ham-fisted rating that we're looking for. We're looking for the full chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I hadn't used fisted, but okay. <laughs> I don't know how I'm yeah. going to edit this. Do you remember FHM magazine? It was an awful magazine. I obviously it's it, it yes. Now. It, it was called. It, was... it stands for for him magazine. Oh. But there was a. I remember it had pictures uh, like oh crazy things that happened in the world this week. Oh my god! And one of them was 
a picture of this poor dude, right, who a boulder has fallen on him and squished him, right? you know, killed him. But he was like the dead with this half a boulder on him and a chicken where, he, right. where his dog was. And I'm thinking, oh, you poor guy. Do you think I'm going to hide behind this cliff and I'm going to have sex with this chicken? And while he did it, a freak accident, a boulder fell on him. And then he so became a feature in that <laughs> what it was the, Yeah, so everyone oh. knows that what he was doing is in the family. Yeah, but did they recognise him? Because wasn't he kind of... You could much. actually see him. You could make out his features. I think it just clobbered him and he knocked him over. But his family knows what he was doing when he was killed. The whole world oh, knew what that, he was doing when he was That killed. memorial must have been... <laughs> Can you imagine being the priest saying, um, so here, like, uh, sorry, sorry, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> you know, how could you? Anyway, there you go. That's how we'll end it. We've ended on a bang. But do you know what? They always have good food at, at those wakes. They always have good food at the wakes. I, mean, I think the chicken was <laughs> looking <Yeah>. good. <laughs> Oh, what are, you might have cooked that chicken. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to let that chicken go to waste. Yeah, cold cuts. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I don't think you should edit this. I think you just put it out as is. Just let it, just let it go. Just let it go. Yeah. Yes. What, what harm could it do? What harm could it really do, considering what's really going on in the world? Uh, the, a, an episode of Frame by Frame Uncensored is not going to really... No. Exactly. That's it. Brilliant. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right buddy. Take care, buddy. We'll see you next week. See you next week. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll do what we're going to do. It'll be great. Yes. It's always great. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Ow! This is fantasy. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Oh, quit griping. I like griping. Oh! <laughs> Bad feeling about this. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. <laughs>